I recently got a message over Skype from a friend of mine, a young friend of mine. He's about half my age, a little less. It was a message that spoke volumes, I thought. He's going his own way. He told me in a nutshell that after having been ill for a few days and locked away in his accommodations that he left for his classes and mingled and essentially realized that he has nothing in common with these people and that he's all alone. Later, he acknowledged that it was a momentary weakness, a lapse, and we all have these, or so it seems. But I think it behooves us to remember what Barbarossa said long ago. Even Atlas shrugged. Even Atlas shrugged. If MGTOW is a path to knowledge, at least as I view it, if going your own way is a path to knowledge, and knowledge is power, and it is often said that knowledge and power specifically has its price, then we'd be lying to ourselves if there is no price to pay in going your own way. But what is that core, that kernel within you if you're going your own way, surrounded by those who are not, surrounded by those who partake in the fakery that humanity enjoys so much? The price you pay, of course, is that you must and yet you cannot. What do I mean by that? To function in this world, you have to lie. For all the protestations of most human beings that they value honesty, no one who is successful in this world is entirely honest, and I mean truly successful. They lie, they fake, they pretend, and they manipulate. You'll often hear me say things along the lines of we would be better off if if clauses followed by a conditional if human beings thought more rationally if so on and so forth I know this is just wishful thinking they are nonetheless my thoughts but this is wishful thinking the truth is that human beings not only want to be lied to, they need to be lied to. The reactions to going your own way are of course quite different depending on whether the audience is a female audience or a male audience. It hits females completely differently than it does males and for the most part I'm completely indifferent and simply don't care about the female reaction. What fascinates me is the male reaction to going your own way. My friend said that he was surrounded by people rambling on about comics, and there's nothing wrong with comics, but all sorts of banal trivia, and he realized that he has nothing in common with these people, and he's all alone, and he forever shall be. There is a fundamental problem in human beings, I believe, and that is that we enjoy being lied to, and we demand the participation of everyone not part of the li that lie, to participate in that lie. One thing you see repeatedly, be it religion or some political credo or whatever, people believe if you get enough people together, all participate in the same mumbo-jumbo that it will... I not necessarily it'll be true, although that is probably a secondary aspect to it, but rather it, it makes you feel better. Who cares if it's true or not? Who cares if we're lying? People enjoy superficiality. Human beings are superficial. It's in our biology. Men are superficial. Women are superficial. We're all superficial to some degree. But you would think with the gift of language that we would not attempt to excrete on that unique gift and fortunate bestowal of evolution with the same superficiality we apply to other things, and yet we do. Look at all the popular YouTubers. I mean the truly popular ones. Look up a guy called Matt, Matthew Santoro. Look at his, his mouth. Look at his, the cornea of his eyes. Look at his eyes themselves. Stretch wide open as if he had surgery. I mean, 
anyone who looks at him with half a brain can see just how fake he is, in particular if you look at older videos of his, and yet he's wildly successful. People will often say, be positive. You have to be positive to leave a good impression on people. Now, this is code. When people say that, that's just code. That's code for, you have to lie to people to leave a positive impression on people. Because people want to be lied to. It makes them feel good. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing to them. But getting back to MGTOW and going your own way. The thing about MGTOW, going your own way, is for whatever reason, men who choose this path are not content with merely being content. And what do I mean by that? They're not content with faking their ways and their paths through life and lying to themselves and lying to everyone else. And they believe, maybe rightly or wrongly, I still don't know, that there might be another way. And when you're very young, as is my friend, or quite young, yeah, there will be moments of weakness. But as you weather the years, as you accumulate winters, it becomes easier and easier. But it's probably all the more impactful in your youth because people are so much more accustomed to not thinking things through, to just going with the flow, going with the crowd. I want to bring up something. I want to bring up a book and a film. Many of you, if not most of you, are familiar with the novel American Psycho by Brett Eastern Ellis, as well as the film. Some of you might be more familiar with the film. Now, before I proceed, obviously, I don't condone at all what Pat, the character Patrick Bateman does to the people in the book. I don't think murder is a good thing, and I don't think violence is a good thing. But it's funny that in the, in the film interpretation of the book, and the film is directed by a woman, we see a very different perspective. We see an attempt to portray him in a certain way that is still open to interpretation, although most interpretations, of course, portray him as a dastardly bastard who murders people, specifically women, several times. But what is Patrick Bateman, really? Well, he's certainly not going his own way. He's something else. So to understand that character and his relationship, not necessarily to go in your own way, but the nature of the human being and the nature of the male, I'll just uh, recall a quote for you. What does he say at the end of the film? It's probably the most important line in the entire film, the collective lines, if you will. What does he say? He says, there are no more barriers to cross. All I have in common with the uncontrollable and the insane, the vicious and the evil, all the mayhem I have caused, and my utter indifference toward it, I have now surpassed. My pain is constant and sharp, and I do not hope for a better world for anyone. In fact, I want my pain to be inflicted on others. I want no one to escape. But even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. No pun my punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. No new knowledge can be extracted from my telling. This confession has meant nothing. Well, you probably would have to see the film or read the book to understand what that all means. But what is Patrick Bateman? Is he just a simple killer, a guy who gets a sh shits and giggles off of killing people and stomping dogs? No, not really. Patrick Bateman is a man who does not have the power to go his own way. He lacks this ability. He recognizes all the superficiality, the lies, the deception. But in the same token, he cannot escape it. And he believes or perhaps acts, rather, at a pure compulsion in a certain way, all the while somehow feeling that that might, just might, offer some remedy, some redemption 
to his decayed state, that decayed state of the superficial, the fakery, the lying. He recognizes all of it, and yet he participates in it. In fact, he participates in it to a greater degree than others, perhaps for the sake of hyperbole, perhaps because he knows it's so fake. He can't stand it, he hates himself, and he hates the world, and he hates the world that he lives in specifically. That is Patrick Bateman. And he seeks a vent. He seeks to vent. Something to do to escape from it all. And he fails. Those words that close the film are the words of a man who failed at escaping the lies of the world. Whereas everyone else because of their weakness, could never even bat an eyelash and give a single thought to the things that Patrick Bateman might have thought about. Not the murder, but the fakery. Why does he talk about Whitney Houston? It's kind of funny. You probably remember the line from the, f from the film, and the book, of course, has many more such lines. Why does he talk about it? Or better put, what does he specifically say? Did you know that Whitney Houston's debut LP, called simply Whitney Houston, had four number one singles on it? Did you know that, Christy? It's hard to choose a favorite among so many great tracks, but The Greatest Love of All is one of the best, most powerful songs ever written about self-preservation, dignity. Its universal message crosses all boundaries and instills one with the hope that it's not too late to better ourselves. Since, Elizabeth, it's impossible in this world we live in to empathize with others, we can always empathize with ourselves. It's an important message, crucial, really, and it's beautifully stated on the album. Well, it seems absurd, of course, talking about Whitney Houston. Why would this guy be talking about Whitney Houston? What does he say? in this world in which we cannot empathize with others. Now this may or may not be true, but certainly in the world of the common human being, the world of the fake, the superficial, the bullshit that everyone peddles, whether to be successful or to simply keep their sanity intact, yeah, there is no sympathy, unless you're sympathizing, or rather there is no empathy, unless you're empathizing in the lie. Everyone empathizes in the lie because they're all participants in it. They're all walking the path of bullshit, walking the path of, of positivity, being fake, lying to themselves and lying to everyone else. Just as the friends, in air quotes of my friend, are doing the same thing, people on YouTube are doing the same thing, people in the world are doing the same thing, the media is, do everyone is doing it. And it might be a completely incorrect interpretation on the part of Patrick Bateman with respect to this song. But there is some wisdom in that. He knows that in that world that everyone pretends to love so much, but more likely because they have to, lest they go insane, he knows that what he said is true. And therein lies the rub. He cannot, Patrick Bateman, no matter what he does, cannot escape from himself and his recognition that something is awry and something is screwy. He can't. He is stuck there. And his only egress, or he believes it to be egress, and it turns out not to be egress, is the violence, the murder. He tells us what he is and what human beings are for the most part. At the very beginning, what does he say? He says there is an idea of a Patrick Bateman, some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me, only an entity, something illusory. And though I can hide my cold gaze, and you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping yours, and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are probably comparable, 
I simply am not there. Notice he says lifestyles. Lifestyles. And he's simply not there. But that vacancy that he cites is the vacancy of the masses. It's the vacancy of most people. Don't think, just act. Lie, not because necessarily if everyone believes the lie, it'll be true, or they believe it to be true, but it's because it feels good. You see, the feel-good world we live in, ultimately, should we fail as a species, that will be one of the primary contributors to it. Our desire to feel good at the cost of truth and our desire to reject inquiry at the cost of truth as well. It's that simple. And Patrick Bateman is essentially a man who failed to go his own way, but lived in a world between, a world between the dimensions, the matrices, if you will. There's a lot more to his character than people believe, and there's a lot more to the interpretation than people ascribe. He offers us insight. And if you're going your own way, you're fighting this battle too. And once again, I don't condone violence. I'm very peaceful. I'm nonviolent. And I would suggest everyone else follow suit in that. We all, we all know that it doesn't work. Patrick Bateman is a man who failed to go his own way precisely because he engaged, engaged in violence, and it led nowhere. It led not to catharsis, as he thought perhaps it did, but to nothingness. And in the end, if it's even possible, he's even more empty than prior, or rather than he had prior been. Who are the empty vessels? Or rather, who is the empty vessel? The man who questions? Who asks if this is, this is veritable and valid and worthwhile? Or the man who just goes along with the crowd? Whether he is the orchestra orchestrating that crowd through his manipulations, his quote-unquote positivity, his lies, or a participant, a recipient of those lies? No. Going your own way has its price. But the ultimate test for a man going his own way is the same test that a man such as Patrick Bateman took and ultimately failed. But if you're going on your own way, you have a choice. Now, certainly I'm not suggesting that men struggling, going their own way, struggling with the ideas and concepts and but the things I'm mentioning ultimately resort to violence. Not at all. But Patrick Bateman does offer some insight into a, a failed outcome. If we wish to continue on some level to participate in society, and it may well be necessary, indeed I believe it is, then we have a very difficult path to walk as we go our own way and acknowledge and recognize the lies for what they are. Everyone else is so wrapped up in continuing it and propagating it and, and just living it to the point where they don't know anything else and you're stuck in the middle, like my friend was, and you just don't know what to do. You laugh, just as Patrick Bateman did. You shake their hands. You participate in the niceties and you despise them for it. And then, when you don't do that, they look at you all in a really funny way. And that is funny. The other day I was taking a walk and I bumped into, it seems to be kismet I imagine, my old flatmate from 10 years ago, 10 years ago plus 12. He called out my name, I had to turn around, and because I didn't think someone would call my name out like that on the street. And of course I recognize him and I recognize his name. A gentleman by the name of Jochen. We didn't really get along towards the end. He was a neat freak, I was not. And ultimately 
he had authority over the contract, so he threw me out of the flat. He acted all friendly and stuff, and generally speaking, I don't, I tend not to uh, try to remember this time of my life. And he acts completely friendly to me, as if nothing had ever happened, not that I'm resentful, it's been a long time. And I tell him honestly, without smiling, frankly, Jochen, I do remember you, I remember that time, and the first thing I remember is you throwing me out of the flat and giving me two weeks' notice. And he tries to deflect and says, Oh, well, there was a time when we harmonized together well. Of course, he is uh, strolling about his offspring in his stroller, uh, proudly displaying his son or daughter. I didn't really pay attention to me. And I throw him off even more. I throw him even more off guard. I say, Oh, you've reproduced. And he kind of ignores my statement. He says, Yeah, this is the third one. Oh, you've reproduced quite a lot. That's an impressive accomplishment. And he laughs, and I don't think he got the joke. Impressive accomplishment, sticking your penis in a vagina and inseminating someone. That is very impressive. You see, I didn't want anything to do with him after we had parted ways, and that remains the same. I'm not resentful. More to the point, I didn't want to engage in this fake-ass bullshit. His smiles, this guy was always like that. And it throws them off guard, and they don't know what to make of it. Now, that was a singular encounter, admittedly. But it is, serves as an example of what happens when you try to sever yourself from it. There, there is disruption. There is friction. As Jochen vainly attempted to steer the conversation back into its normal superficial course. What do you do these days? Blah, 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 blah. And I was polite, but I did make my point several times to him at which point he had to wheel off his offspring, probably because his wife was telling him to come home. Who knows? I don't care. But this is the difficult thing about going your own way, I think, ultimately. It's not in the nitty-gritty of the male-female relations. There's so much focus on that. It's ridiculous. It really is. Yes, we need to understand the male. We need to understand the female. The gods only know how often I've talked about those subjects. MGTOW is about to find the lie and somehow not being part of it and yet still living in the society and still living in this world. We say, let everyone live that lie. Let everyone else pretend to the point where they believe the lie, where the lie is some sort of pseudo-truth to them. Only to fail it sometimes. You know, that guy, Matthew, on YouTube, Matthew Soprano, right, who was constantly smiling, his eyes wide agape as if pincers had stretched them open. Does anyone actually believe he's always like that? People are actually not robots. We all have moments of weakness. The difference between a man going his own way and some another man, for example, who has never given a thought to any of these ideas difference is crucial. That difference is the fact that we understand when we have those moments of weakness, where it's coming from, what its relationship is to us and the rest of the world, and these other men, they are fucking lost at sea. But luckily for them, they're so practiced and rehearsed in the circus game of lies and pretense and fakery that they've been spending decades in participating in, in some cases, that they just keep on going on and on and on. And, you know, they don't bat an eyelash. Sometimes, though, as we all know, it does all come crashing down. Some very famous cases are those cases of divorce, the loss of children, loss of offspring, the loss of financial assets. It all comes crashing down, and you just can't fake that smile anymore. And all of a sudden, all your friends are gone, and nobody wants to hang out with you anymore, and you're all fucking alone, and you're crying on the fucking cold, dusty wooden floor of your shitty flat, and yeah, that's when it hits you. Man who, you, who is not going your own way, that is when it hits you, and it will hit you eventually. The difference, once again, is that my friend and other men who experience moments of weakness recognize them for what they are, and draw strength from them. See, we know 
that it's all a big fucking lie. The rituals humans engage in. Human beings just can't afford to be honest to each other. They're afraid to offend. They're afraid to exclude. They're afraid of this, of that. They all want to be part of it. Well, I don't want to be part of it. Because I recognized a long time ago that being part of it compromised who I was and who I am. And I refuse. And when I had dabble in their world, I laugh to myself, inwardly. I don't let them know, but I laugh to myself. And it's funny, but it takes a while to get there. So my friend, if you're watching this, or any other man going his own way watching this, as the winters pass, you will draw resolve from it all. You'll understand perhaps even more clearly than you do now, that the lie for the sake of happiness is just that. It is no true happiness because it's all predicated on deception and more importantly, self-deception. Men do it, women do it, all human beings do it. They do it to be successful. They do it to garner success. They do it in their social relations, familial relations. They cannot simply accept things as they are. And unfortunately, this is how human beings will continue to proceed, likely for millennia to come. I see no end to it. I can only offer my wishful thinking. But you as an individual, you as an individual man going his own way, you do have a choice. You can defect. You can move away from that. Whether you do that, that's entirely up to you, ultimately. We can also look once again to the false example of Patrick Bateman. He recognized so much of this, and yet he was led astray. And ultimately, he found no salvation, no, res no redemption whatsoever. And I think that ultimately has to do that even, even in his seeking of redemption, his quest, his search for it, it still involved other people. You know, he still had to entertain these prostitutes. He still had to murder people, inflict violence. He didn't look inward. And so he was always trapped in the same cage that he had been in from the get-go since the outset. He just couldn't leave, no matter what he did. He could not leave. Men going their own way are different, especially those who defect completely, utterly. We just don't care. And we don't care in the sense that we do not want to live the lie that everyone else propagates so they can all fucking feel good at the cost of truth and at the cost of true happiness. Whatever that might be, if it's even attainable, it's certainly not attainable by lying to ourselves, lying through our teeth, teeth lying to other people, lying to the world, if that's happiness, though, we already know that that's not happiness. And that's the point. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend.